Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, we're making Meatloaf 73 here, and I just wanted to say a couple things real quick. Um, thanks everybody for all your patience in uh, dealing with this uh, my little T-shirt fiasco there. Um, so just as a reminder, anybody that's not happy with their uh, with their print uh, or the quality of their T-shirt, um, contact Teespring directly. Ask for a store credit because we're coming out with some, uh, some new and improved ones. Um, and uh, so you get a store credit so you'll end up getting another shirt uh, with the uh, improved uh, printing uh, logo. And also I've jacked up the, uh, uh, the quality of the t-shirt too. I wasn't real happy with the, uh, um, the t-shirt quality. So, Hold on, uh, I got them coming. I got some proofs coming that I, I did myself, kind of offline, uh, kind of a secret URL. And I'm going to show them on camera and we'll kind of evaluate them on camera before um, um, you exercise your store credit. So, anyway, just a little update on that. Also, uh, um, I kind of uh, calmed down a little bit on the uh, replying to the comments, so I'm way behind on that and I apologize. Uh, but I just took a little time for myself and been working in the shop with the rock and roll going and uh, just kind of, you know, being mellow. So let's just call it that. So, uh, and I'll share a little bit about, a little bit of what I've been working on uh, uh, in my mellowness. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's get going here. Uh, we got some uh, viewer packages from around the world. Uh, I got an eBay purchase from around the world. Um, what else? Um, I got some other stuff. Let's go uh, do walkabout and uh, go look at some uh, so look at some cool stuff. Okay, so we got some uh, some viewer packages here, um, actually from all over the country and all over the world. This uh, pile here is from a viewer in Australia, and uh, he included uh, some edible uh, uh, swag here. Um, I don't know, some of you guys may recognize that. Um, anyway, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, this is from Illinois. Uh, I got a little hammer here, and we'll take a look at that. And then we got a, a real eclectic pile of, uh, of real interesting stuff here from Pennsylvania, I think. Is, uh, um, pretty sure that's Pennsylvania. Bill Stupak, okay? And we'll take a look at that. We'll come in closer. There's some, uh, some interesting caps here um, and uh, some tool holders here that we'll talk about. But uh, let's uh, bring the camera in a little closer, cut my head out of it, and uh, get in close to the goodies and we'll take a look. Okay, so this first one, this comes to us from um, Vic Patton, okay? And Vic is in, uh, in Illinois. And uh, he wrote me a nice little note and he actually an email and then he just said he wanted to, he had a little cute little hammer he wanted to send in. And uh, so uh, we exchanged some emails. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, what is he, there's something in here that was, uh, um, oh yeah, he's talking about going to a used machinery shop uh, called Rimco. Uh, uh, out where he is and uh, anyway they were taking a look uh, at some used machinery and stuff out there. So Vic, thanks for the little hammer, this is pretty cool. It's a little claw hammer here and um, it's got a guy's name on it here, Al Frey. I think so, yeah, Al Frey. And um, it's well used actually. So it looks like uh, Uncle Al uh, made good use of this thing. Um, I would venture that this is not an original handle. Now what's interesting here is his face here. So I don't know what Al was doing with this hammer. Um, but it looks like he was tapping on something that was potentially kind of hard. Uh, maybe some kind of heat treated wire or nails or something. I don't know. Uh, or maybe this hammer is a little bit soft. But um, I really actually I kind of like the handle that's on it. Um, it's thin in this direction and then it has a little swell at the end and that's kind of one of my uh, um, favorite kind of handle configurations. So I like the I like the flat handle that way um, your hand uh, 
you have an orientation. So if you have a round handle, you can't tell where you are. But if you have a flat on it that's aligned with um, the features on the hammer, you have kind of a, um, you know, it's just a little guide so you know where you're hitting. So uh, anyway, uh, we got old Al's um, uh, hammer here now. And uh, let's see, is it engraved up there? I don't think so. No branding on the hammer, but it's kind of a cute little hammer with a nice handle. Anyway, Vic, thank you very much for that. That's a, uh, that's, that will go in the rack with all the other ones. So thank you, sir. Okay, so this next one, uh, this comes to us from uh, Bill Stupak, and he is in um, Pennsylvania. And uh, he, he contacted me via email, and uh, he hangs out uh, on the uh, Home Shop Machinist site. And anyway, he got this lot of tools from, uh, let's see, what did he say here? Uh, a, a local auction uh, through Vintage Machinery, which is uh, Keith Rucker's uh, little site there. And um, so, oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry, I get that wrong. Um, he figured out what these tool holders go to through Vintage Machinery. Sorry, I get that wrong. So these go to a VersaMill machine. Now, um, I don't have a VersaMill. So if somebody out there has a VersaMill and they need a, uh, uh, some tool holders, shoot me a private email and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, work out, uh, we'll work out how to get these to you. So uh, if you have a VersaMill. So, um, y you know, I, I can't make use of these. Uh, they, they don't fit anything that I have. So if somebody has uh, one of these machines uh, that can use these tool holders, great. Um, and uh, we'll send them along and we'll, we'll spread the love. So uh, anyway, Bill, thanks for those. Now let's set, the, let's set those aside because we got some other interesting stuff here too. So let's just get this out of the way here. This is a, uh, um, I think they call this a bossing hammer. Well, it's not really a bossing hammer. Um, this is kind of a raising hammer. Um, it's got two different radii in it, and um, it's got a fairly long offset from the handle to here, so you can reach down into hollow shapes. Uh, oh, hollowing hammer. I think that's what it is, a hollowing hammer. Um, I, I didn't look it up before I, I started yapping here, but uh, I've seen this type before. I don't actually have one. Um, so this is another good one. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll do a little video on sticking a new handle in this and, uh, and getting those faces in shape. And that's actually a nice little handle. It's uh, uh, it's over a pound, I think, um, but uh, pretty cool. So that's a uh, um, bossing hammer, not a bossing hammer. What did they say? Or hollowing hammer, hollowing hammer. Jeez, the brain's going. Now that's a big tool bit. <laughs> it's Victor Cobalt. Um, looks like it's ground as a threader. Um, and I'll tell you, I've ground enough high-speed tools to tell you that that grinding that much material off that will take you a while and uh, so um, that's kind of an A-bomb size tool there and uh, <laughs> that may be who this goes to because uh, um, I don't boy is that one inch yeah that's one inch and uh, 25 millimeter tool I think Adams Adams um, multi-fix holder will take up to that size tool so Adam uh, that might be uh, headed out the floor for you so and uh, boy thanks to whoever did all that grinding they did a nice job and uh, uh, you could probably use this as is needs a little flat there but other than that it looks pretty good so then there was a couple of rectangular tool bits these are always good uh, these make good trepanning um, uh, tools because they're tall uh, so you can get some strength under that edge and um, uh, they also, you know, make good parallels that uh, have two sizes to work with. So, uh, you know, you can use high-speed bits for that. Uh, and these are these are Armstrong. Um, is that one Armstrong too? Yeah, two Armstrong. So that's nice too. Here's an uh, old-school parting blade here, and uh, this one's this one's tapered, and this is a Williams. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know, three quarter, three quarter inch blade there. Um, I don't know if I have a holder that fits this. That's pretty good. It says new on it. <laughs> old, old parting blade there. And then, uh, let's scoot that out of the way. 
Let me, uh, maybe I'll zoom in on these a little bit. We'll get in a little closer and we'll look at some of these taps here because there's some kind of interesting stuff here. We got some roughing and finishing taps in uh, uh, several leads and, uh, and flavors here. So let's, uh, I'm going to move the camera and we'll get in a little closer and we'll look at some of these taps. Okay, so we got, we got quite a collection of stuff here. Um, this is kind of an interesting lot here. Um, so there's some sets here that kind of go together and um, how do we want to talk about this here? So there's some fairly simple stuff and then there's some uh, a little more complicated stuff that will take a little more explaining here. But what we have is some of these are pairs and here's a good example here. Here's a pair of taps and what we have is uh, these are roughing and finishing taps here. Okay, So this is a roughing tap for a 5 8 8 square thread. Okay, so this pilot here fits your your tap drill hole. In fact, you can determine the tap drill hole by just measuring that. And this takes a pass through and uh, kind of cuts a uh, um, a shallow pass through. Okay, and then you follow through with with this guy here, and this is a five eighths eight finish square thread. Okay, um, so these. You know, for people that are restoring machine tools, um, older machine tools, you see square thread and you see Acme threads on them. So we have some Acme and some square here. Um, so anyway, these are uh, these are um, two tap sets, rough and finish here. So and you know, you see three tap sets sometimes depending on the uh, the depth of the thread. So let's set those aside. We kind of talked about that. Um, so there's a bunch of square threads here, and then this is a uh, three-quarter five uh, square thread, and um, this looks like a uh, uh, because it has this pilot like this, and the and the thread starts at basically at zero and then ramps up. This looks like a roughing tap here, um, although it does not say rough on it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, so I would say that. Maybe we're missing the, uh, well, let's see, maybe this three quarter five, what was that? Three quarter five, oh, okay, here we go. So that, okay, there we go. Uh, um, so I guess I separated them in, inadvertently there. So these two, these two would go together here as well. So, and you can see the square profile on the finish tab. Now here it almost looks like an Acme because it's a roughing tap and it's just kind of, uh, taking some out uh, to make room for this guy to come through here. But there's a square thread. Okay, and then oops, set those aside. Um, and so this is kind of more of the same here, five ace eight. And uh, and then here we got a. Uh, now this is an oddball, thirteen sixteenths six. Now there's a. Uh, this looks like it's a uh, uh, three pass uh, setup here. Um, yeah, and these are all uh, these are Greenfields, uh, nice old uh, old U.S. company. Right, set that aside. What I really want to talk about is these uh, these other guys over here. So this is square. Let's get that aside there, and then um, okay. So these are these are all very interesting ones here. I think these are square too. Oh no, that's Acme here. All right, so th these are the ones I want to talk about. Um, maybe I'll come in a little closer here. Tighten up the shot so you can get a, a nice uh, look at some of these uh, these wacky taps here. So, okay, so we got a couple different sizes here. Um, this is five eighths six, but it's double lead, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, and uh, this is a rougher, and then this is a finish. Okay, all right. So there you can see the pilot on that. All right, and then this is three quarter eight uh, double. Uh, double lead, okay, and once again, we'll look, and this is left hand too, by the way. So for uh, machine tool restoration, a lot of times you see left-handed nuts, like on a a, a lathe cross slide, for example. Um, uh, sometimes those nuts are left-handed threads. So, and then um, so for the machine tool restoration guys, uh, th these are very interesting, and uh, uh, maybe we'll figure out a way that we can send these out and loan them to people that are actually. Uh, 
uh, restoring uh, equipment and really don't want to buy an expensive tap set like this. This is probably a couple hundred bucks right here. So, uh, and it's not like they're going to see a lot of use in my shop. So, I don't mind uh, loaning them out. Uh, people take care of them and uh, and then uh, send them back. So, uh, anyway, we'll talk about that a little more too. Um, so, and then here's five uh, A six left hand and this is uh, one third uh, one third lead so that's a two start okay um, and same thing what do we got here this is I can't quite read that the lights hitting it badly 5A6 double lead okay so this is a three start here actually sorry um, yeah double lead God my eyes are oh and it says bronze on it so this may be uh, uh, ground with the right rake for uh, for cutting bronze too it even identified the material there so that's probably a uh, um, one for doing a, like a lead screw right there so let's uh, let's talk about this double lead thing here for a sec here um, let's, let's see what do I want to do I want to look at that one Let's, let's not look at the left-handed ones, maybe. <laughs> let's, let's set these aside here. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, so hopefully, make sure you guys can see that crud. Oh, looks like my battery might be getting a little wimpy here. Uh, so we got 5A6 double lead, okay? So, and then uh, start and finish. And what the double lead means is, if you put a thread gauge on this, it'll measure as a, it'll, the spacing between the threads will look like a five it will look like a six threads per inch but what it with a double lead it behaves like a three thread per inch okay so you have that number so it's actually two threads that are 180 degrees apart from one another so you get a double lead it's sometimes called a two start threads okay and um, so for the same thread depth as a uh, as a six thread per inch okay you get a lead of three threads per inch okay so if you if you cut a three right the thread would be much larger and much deeper which sometimes you can't tolerate um, you know if you have a small component like a laid lead screw nut okay so let me uh, let me get a new battery in this camera and um, um, we'll keep going on this a little bit okay so anyway um, I got a new battery in there um, what I was saying about these here is um, these are really specific taps probably to uh, uh, machine tool stuff and we got square threads which you run into on, um, on saws and mills and lathes and all kinds of things and then you have Acme and in particular left hand Acme and multi start Acme so if anybody out there uh, is working on an old lathe and they're making a lead screw nut and uh, um, they have potential need of a uh, an Acme or a square thread tap set let me know shoot me an email and uh, I'll tell you what I what I have and if there's a matchup I'm willing to loan these out and uh, uh, and I would just be the repository of these and they can go anywhere um, and uh, you know we can you know, I don't know what happens if one gets broken or something like that. Hopefully not. And uh, um, but let's try it. Let's see how it works. So uh, anyway, Bill, thank you very much. That was a really uh, uh, nice, nice package of stuff there. And uh, if you have a VersaMill, shoot me an, uh, shoot me an email on that. And uh, and if you have need of an Acme or square thread tap, uh, shoot me an email. Okay. So let's. Uh, uh, I got two more here to go, and uh, let's uh, let's move on and look at some more stuff. Okay, so I got these last week, and I actually uh, I actually filmed a segment on uh, on these, but the exposure was crappy, so the, they were totally blown out, and you couldn't uh, you couldn't see these stickers. Now these come from uh, James Dressman, and he has a uh, a YouTube channel called. Uh, war machine and he does some gunsmithing and machine work and stuff like that and we'll put a little link up here for you uh, for 
James's channel. So go check it out, and uh, if you like what he's doing, uh, throw him a sub and uh, throw some comments up for him. Anyway, uh, I sent G he asked me uh, for some stickers, and uh, he said he would trade some stickers, and I said, yeah, sure, right on. And uh, so I sent him some stickers, and then uh, he sent me uh, some of his cool uh, uh, logo stickers here. So anyway, James, thank you very much. Uh, guys, go uh, check out James's channel and, uh, and see what he's working on. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so this next one comes to all the way uh, from Australia, and uh, this is from uh, Peter Spence, or Pedro. Um, anyway, uh, Pedro and I uh, email back and forth, uh, actually a fair amount, and uh, so he wanted to send something into the show, and uh, he sent me this gigantic box of stuff here, uh, and I think I said earlier with some edibles, and you can see uh, that... Uh, this is this uh, gourmet beef jerky from Australia, made from Australian uh, uh, beef. And uh, it's actually wonderful, it's really good. Uh, and you can see I hate it, uh, <laughs> I've been mowing that. Um, now this one here, I gotta, I gotta work up to this one here. Um, I've taken a liking to Marmite actually. And um, um, Paul uh, Compton sent me some Marmite and uh, I took it to work actually and I've been putting it on uh, uh, bread and uh, with cheese and stuff like that and it's actually awesome. Now this one, um, I, gotta, I gotta work on this one here. This was a very distinctive taste here and um, um, helps fight fatigue and essential for brain function so I probably should try this. Um, at least when Mr. Bozo's around, uh, take an injection of that. So. Uh, Anyway, Pete, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll try that. Uh, if nothing else, we'll try it as a cutting fluid and see how that works. So, uh, anyway, he sent me uh, some interesting things here. Um, these are uh, these are kind of cool here. I don't know if you guys can read that. It says uh, it says ProSense, and uh, so these are Australian condoms. And uh, uh, I don't know what does it say there. It says it says medium on that. So uh, uh, now you know how the European sizing goes. Uh, in the U.S., we'd actually call these small. But uh, um, anyway, <laughs> all joking aside, guys, it's uh, it's some more of these uh, neoprene coated gloves, and they just happen to be called ProSense, which uh, uh, I thought was funny. Okay, so. Uh, these look about uh, the right size for me, so we're going to try those out and, uh, and see how they work. So, uh, uh, for the folks in Australia, there's a uh, website right there for ProSense, and uh, you guys can uh, check those out. So, uh, I, I mean, come on, look at this. It says ProSense, feel the difference, right? I mean, this is just like right out of a condom ad, right? I mean, uh, maybe uh, maybe they have the other part of their business is... Uh, is uh, pleasure items there so okay anyway joking aside um, we got some uh, grinding wheels here and um, these are metric sizes these are 100 millimeter discs here and these are FERD uh, PFERD uh, which is a real interesting company they make uh, uh, burrs and files and abrasives and sanding discs and stuff very high quality stuff um, actually these uh, those blue file handles that you see that I have. Let me grab one. So uh, these blue file handles, these are wonderful file handles. These are made by the same company, uh, this uh, PFERD FERD, and it's got a little horse on it uh, to kind of uh, distinguish them. Anyway, German German stuff and. Uh, uh, these are ergonomic file handles. I really love them, and you can see them from a mile away across the shop. So I'm not going to open all these up. We got some flap discs, we got some zip discs, uh, two different thicknesses, and some hard discs, uh, grinding discs. So these look wonderful. Uh, these are Klingspore here, which is a uh, an abrasive company that's uh, actually doing pretty well, I think. So very good. Always use abrasives. Uh, we got some inserts. Uh, CNMG and WNMG. Uh, so CNMG is always a useful uh, flavor to have around. And I think I have a holder for these smaller uh, uh, WNMGs here. 
Got two flavors of that, a uh, coated and uncoated. So uh, anyway, cool. Uh, oh, these are Iskars, okay. Uh, those are good. And then uh, the last thing is we have some, uh, some carbide burrs. And, uh, or is this high speed? Oh no, that's carbide. Um, anyway, some nice uh, furred um, uh, carbide burrs. So, uh, and I got quite a burr collection. <laughs> that sounds actually funny too. So, actually, maybe I'll pull that out and uh, we'll take a quick look at it. Uh, I, you know, Keith Rucker sent me some. A couple people have sent them to me, and I had to. I had them in a box in my toolbox, and I had to. I had to expand it because I had. I had a lot of them actually. So maybe I'll pull that out, and we'll we'll take a quick look at that. Anyway, Pete, um, he sent me a nice note here, and um, Pete, you know, you're. You're a bud, okay? So uh, um, I really appreciate the box that you sent. Uh, I know it cost you a few bucks to send that, and uh, um, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's put these away actually and take a take a quick look at some of the, the birds that I have, and. Uh, Anyway, uh, so I, I spent some time kind of segregating them into the different types so that you can actually put your hands on the ones that you want. Um, now these, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave them, oops. I'm gonna leave them in the, uh, in the boxes, okay? So according to my, uh, <laughs> my uh, organizational system here, <laughs> I don't know where this one belongs here. Um, I would say that it's going to go in this slot here. We have one that's very similar here, okay? And uh, you have some other uh, different uh, shapes, um, that are uh, similar shapes. So I, I you know, I kind of segregated them by shape uh, is what I did there. So I think I am going to leave that in the little tray if I can get them to fit. Oops, tricky. Tricky German box here. How does that go? Okay, I think that's how it goes. Let's get it to go. And what's this one here? Oh, it looks like it's another. Oh no, that's a. So that one's a straight taper. This one's a a curved curved taper here. See, this is the problem, right? Is you get so much stuff that uh, you gotta uh, figure out how to stow it there. So. Anyway, um, so there's all different styles here. These are uh, this open style uh, for uh, real soft materials like copper and, and aluminum. Uh, a couple different shapes of those. I used to work at a company that did um, um, aluminum castings and uh, so I ran a little R&D shop for them. So uh, we actually used some of the old castings to create new castings from. So uh, I used to use the hell out of these there uh, to reshape stuff. Um, little scary points for reaching down into stuff. What else we got in here? And then we got the, uh, the, long, uh, the long reach ones. Um, now, some people uh, are a little worried about, uh, uh, about spinning these. Uh, at 20,000 RPM, but uh, because of what uh, we call in engineering the critical length here, so sometimes um, you can have a, a shape that'll start whipping, it'll have a resonant uh, uh, whip to it um, at some critical speed. But normally a lot of times you're using these and you actually put your finger around them to stabilize them. Uh, and other times you are actually reaching way down in there. But uh, I've never, really had a problem um, even when they get loaded up and they're unbalanced so uh, um, it's just one of those things where theory does not quite meet with uh, uh, with the real world there so uh, so the math says that these should be unstable and uh, and actually potentially scary but they're not so uh, don't be afraid to use them so uh, anyway carbide burrs and I gotta figure out where that goes thanks for looking